Hi friends! You can see that I'm not actually in sync here because it was so loud here at the Waffle House where we stopped for breakfast before we take a drive on the south side of Lake Chapala that it was just unbearable to listen. Today we're going to stop at the Waffle House in Ahihik and have some breakfast. Then we drive through San Juan. We go to Hoko where we witness an armed robbery at a convenience store and then drive along the south shore of Lake Chapala to here which is the road up to Mazamitla up into the foothills of the El Tigre mountains and back home again. So what did you order for breakfast? With melted butter. <laughs> Huevos Mexicanos con frijoles y tocino entero. 74 pesos. And Lynn has butter. A Belgian waffle. Butter butter with some waffle. Oh yeah. She has butter with a side of waffle. Is that right? Yeah. Wasn't I just talking about this the other day? my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Well, we have some new speed bumps here. This is west of Ahihik. Before we get to San Juan, I counted one time from Hokotepec to my house in Ahihik, there were 23 speed bumps. We call them topes here. And I guess they're necessary to keep people from going too fast, but they are annoying. People are always asking me, well, what is it you don't like about Mexico? Topis. It's topis. That's what I don't like about Mexico. San Juan here is the home of that restaurant that has the mural painted on it with all the patrons. It's also the place where the Balneario is, the thermal heated hot pools that we go to. Oh, and up above San Juan here is the Racket Club. We should take a tour of the Racket Club someday. Oh, and go to my favorite restaurant up there, La Vita Bella. Now we're in Hokotepec. Every time I pass a bus on this street, I think of when I drove my old 33 foot south wind through this street. Had about, uh, oh, maybe a half an inch on each side of the mirrors here and there. Topi. That was a topi. I like Coco Tobacco. Thank you. 
a guy was just in there robbing the place at gunpoint. He came running out with a pistol. And the police came running in here and nailed him. They got him handcuffed and threw him in the back of the pickup. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> hey, that might have been our excitement for the day, huh? <laughs> well, yours anyway. Well, I saw the guy running out of the out of the store with a pistol, big old gun in his hand. And just that minute, I heard the the uh, police truck coming. And I'm looking at him, and the guy just kind of stopped and laid down on the ground and uh, th th threw the pistol away from himself which is probably real smart because th three officers already had their guns drawn. Yeah, and he's obviously been through that before. But, for the record, what did Jerry do? Took pictures. No, I grabbed my camera and hid behind the gas pump. <laughs> <laughs> We are leaving the west side of Hokotepec and approaching Highway 15, which runs from Guadalajara to Morelia. It's four lanes, uh, two lanes going each way, and there's no traffic control here. There's no stop sign, there's no stoplight. It's just pull out into traffic and take your chances. There are speed bumps which slow people down, but it's never made any sense to me that there aren't any traffic controls at that particular intersection. We're at the very west end of Lake Chapala. Two kilometers from Chapala, we just passed the entrance to that RV park, Roca Azul, that I did a video about. You see all the white things on the right and some ahead there on the left also. Those are plastic covers over raspberry fields. They grow a lot of uh, berries here, um, Driscoll Farms, if you get berries in the States, they may have come from right underneath these plastic covers. They grow a lot of other vegetables here, lettuce, tomatoes, artichokes, peppers, a lot of uh, vegetables that you eat in the United States come from right here on the south shore of Lake Chapala. And by the way, the berries taste a lot better here because they can't ship ripe berries. They're half green when they ship them. You can buy the ripe ones out here. They're too ripe to ship and they are much better than what you get in the store in the States. I've read that historically when the Spanish came here in about 1540, they dug out the place where the water exits Lake Chapala in order to lower the lake level, creating this fertile farmland between the shore of the lake and the mountains. Before that, the water went all the way to the mountains. Now it's a fertile farmland. I've put some pictures in here from a few years ago when a friend of mine and I went four-wheeling up almost to the top of Mount Garcia. Garcia is 9,000 feet high and the higher we went, the steeper it got until finally we had to turn around. And on the way back down we took a little different road and we ran into an ostrich farm. And this guy put on a great show for us. Hey, does this mean you're in love with, huh? You do like a room. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I think he's doing that for you, not for me. Although I didn't start till I got here.
We're entering the town of San Luis Soyotlan. We're passing the cemetery and we're still about a half a mile from town. And all along here there is a paved walkway that goes all the way to the center of town so that when they're having a funeral procession, I guess, they can walk all the way from town along here. We're going to pull off of the road up here because there's something I want to show you. Um, shoot. Well, you can't see it anymore. Right behind those trees, the trees have either grown up or it's not there anymore, there was a lighthouse. And that lighthouse was built by Glenn Yarborough, who used to sing about lighthouses. He was the lead singer for the Lamplighters in 1960. And uh, he retired and built this house there. And we're, there's, that's a restaurant, but the next gate right there, that was his property. I met him once, and I was up in that lighthouse one time. He moved back to the States a few years ago, and he died a couple of years ago. Glenn Yarborough, a nice guy, he used to help the kids out around the neighborhood here a lot. It's Saturday, and there's a market up here on the right, and it's, it's going to be a bottleneck and a traffic jam. And there's a guy, he doesn't care. I think maybe that was the honey badger. He don't care. He just park anywhere. So, are you calling me the crazy driver? Sometimes you gotta be the crazy driver. It's still not quite as challenging as Granada, Spain. You remember that? Five lanes going 50 miles an hour with a motor scooter in between every lane. Oh, another honey badger driver. We'll just stop right there and put on our flashers. Actually, he's letting somebody out. It's not a problem. Oh, here, park on the wrong side of the street. Put on your flashers, that'll work. You see, I don't know if you can tell, but there isn't room to pass. See, that car stops for me. You're seeing what the camera sees. What you're not seeing is 18 foot of van behind me that's eight and a half foot wide. And when I pass the opposing traffic, I have about an inch on each side between the utility pole and the car coming at me. I love driving in Mexico. I think it's fun. Not everybody does.
Here we are in the town of Tuxcueca, and a right turn here takes us towards Mazamitla, sometimes referred to as the Switzerland of Mexico, which is way overhyped. It's very charming. A lot of cabins for rent. It's up in the forest, so a lot of the buildings are built out of wood. And it's uh, cooler up there. It's high. We're going up into the foothills of the El Tigre Mountains. I've been up in here at 11,000 feet and you can see five mountain peaks from the place that I went to way up here in the mountains. I'm going to turn around here and go back down. Oh, horse. <laughs> I came up here to drive back down because I thought it would give us a good view of the lake. The problem is that it's hazy today and you can't even see the lake or the mountains across the lake. I'm going to stop over here at the Oxo. When I first came to Mexico I asked a Mexican friend how do you pronounce that O-X-X-O -X -X and he looked at me and he said we just say 7-Eleven Well, another gourmet meal in Mexico. Let's drive down through Tuxcueca to the lake and see what there is to see. Ooh, there was a Suzuki sidekick there. Did you see that? I'm partial to those. Uh, you may know if you watch my videos when I'm in the motorhome. This is the smoothest main street of a Mexican town on the south side of Lake Chapala. Town Plaza there on the right. It's uh, Saturday afternoon now. Things seem to be all closed up. The street is so much better than the cobblestones in Ahihik. My friend from Switzerland says, stop calling those cobblestones, they're just rocks. I'm going to park here in the shade for a minute. Ooh, there's a rooster. Dog content! <laughs> he said, hey, okay, went back to sleep. I guess, um, he wasn't as excited to see me as I was hey, to see you. If you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.